Welcome back, everybody. If you've been looking for love during the pandemic, it may feel hard to find. Despite a surge in activity and enrollment on dating apps, more than half of Canadians report feeling isolated, anxious, lonely throughout this entire lockdown. So we want to give tips to those who are in wanting to enter the dating scene safely during this phase of the pandemic. Let's welcome our very own relationship expert, Cynthia Loy. Yay, <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> We're Thanks for having me, guys. We're so excited to be chatting <laughs> with you today. But seriously, let's start with a very basic question because it's on the minds of many, I think. Can people start dating now? And if so, what guidelines should they be following? Yeah, there's really not a super simple answer for that. Based on the current health guidelines, of course, the safest way to interact with people who aren't living under your roof um, is basically at outdoors at a distance of around six feet and ideally masked. And advancing beyond that with any kind of physical closeness, intimacy, it is risky and you have to be aware of the risks. The good news is that I find that this is a really interesting and advantageous time to explore romance in different ways. All it needs is a bit of imagination. Hmm. Ooh, okay, so let's dive into that imagination because listen, we set off the top there that there is an, an uptick. There is interest in online dating. People are checking out platforms of all kinds and apps and whatnot, but people are reporting that it's not necessarily leading to something meaningful or maybe it's boring or it's different than it used to be. But you're saying that there can be imaginative ways to still digitally or online date. Well, here's the thing. Having spoken to a lot of daters pre-pandemic, one of the biggest complaints that came up was the feeling that there was a real sense of um, uh, disposability when it came to meeting. There was a lot of hookups. Everything felt like it moved really fast. And um, a lot of people were feeling like they weren't really getting anywhere or finding meaningful connections. So now with COVID, I mean, obviously, there's a big uh, change in this culture of immediacy. The stakes are simply too high to be mm. just dealing with hookups. Um, so it's created it for many people a much slower atmosphere and so many people are finding that really really lovely what's great is that the apps have really stepped up as well so you can really very quickly determine what someone's stance is on as things as simple as mask wearing or, mm -hmm. or the pandemic mm -hmm. itself so you can just like swipe uh, away if you're not interested in somebody who's on the same page when it comes to the pandemic um, what I will say though is uh, we're going to get into some of the ideas around imaginative ideas that you can be safe in but one thing that is true now more than than ever is that you need to the two T's transparency and trust those have always been important but they're more important now than ever well let's talk about right now because it is winter and we saw a big uptick in January so what's your advice for people looking to date safely in the winter weather Okay, so here's the first idea, which is to take your date outside to a place that is really special to you. I think this is a great opportunity to share stories and experiences and really get to know someone. You can do this together, but you could also just start by doing this virtually. You know, you could start with by texting somebody saying, you know, I want you to take me on a phone call to your favorite place in the city. So let's say they, you're, the person you're interested in pops up in the woods and you love nature. This is a great place to start to get to know some of the places where you connect. Or conversely, you could ask them a question like, where's a place that you like to shop for clothes in the city? If they pop up at, let's say, in front of a sports paraphernalia store, and like, for example, you're me, that's going to be like a Eh, this is not maybe going to work for me. <laughs> so you can learn a lot from somebody by just asking a few simple questions and getting playful. Love it. <laughs> I will, another idea I will say um, is to go and attend a virtual event together. There are so many great things happening in and around your city that are virtual. You can go to art gallery shows. You can attend concerts, lectures, museum tours. Um, and I think you could do this again while you're texting on the phone, while you're sharing, a, you know, an actual call. Um, and there's, there's again, I, a friend of mine did this. They went to, they both were interested in opera. So they went to see a virtual opera together while they were both in the comfort of their own home. And as it turned out, one of the opera stars had this huge bat in the cave, like a big piece of snot right in the nose. And so the two so the two of them were like giggling and texting each other, being like, do you see that? Oh, my God. And they were dying laughing. And I just think this is an opportunity where you, again, you can get a sense of the person's humor, what their interests are, and start a real conversation going um, that, that leads with curiosity. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I love all of these ideas. Um, but, you know, I think when we zoom out a little bit, everything going online and digital, it really, you know,
know, and dating, it does require you to be forthcoming and share and express yourself and be open. But doing that through a screen for some people is like real tough, Cynthia. So um, how do we get around maybe our discomfort with the fact that there ultimately are screens between us? Hmm. I mean, here's what's important for people to know that research shows that couples, who, successful couples who have high level of communications, they are more likely to have longstanding relationships. So we need to get good at using our words. Um, here's a good formula to use, approach with curiosity and reciprocity. So ask a lot of questions, but maybe don't ask any questions that you don't want to answer if it gets reciprocated back to you. Um, here's another thing that we should start thinking about, and this all circles around consent. Um, if you want to, let's say, you've gotten to the point where you've done enough sort of virtual connections and you are getting together in person, but maybe you're not quite there where you want to uh, have, a, have an intimate connection, but you kind of are thinking about it, you can articulate that. You can say, I would really love to kiss you right now. Um, it's potentially super sexy to let that slow fire burn. And there's a really great opportunity to really clearly establish sexual consent boundaries. Okay, well, let's just keep going down that hot and heavy road because it's very intriguing, Cynthia, because this may lead people down in this age, some phone sex, some cyber sex. But for some people, this is not their bag, like not my bag. I'm not good at it. So how do we, I mean, and that's a safe way to be kind of intimate right now. So how do we get there? How do we cross mm. the finish line, Cynthia? <laughs> I mean, you know, first, my first tip is to think like long distance daters. So maybe you know somebody who's been in a long distance dating scenario, call them up, ask them questions, because pandemic dating is a lot like that. And one of the things that successful long distance daters have besides good communication is a comfort level with cyber sex. And that doesn't mean you have to do that, um, but you can maybe find something that works for you. Here's an idea. You could get on a video call, um, and if you don't feel comfortable verbalizing what you're doing, what you're feeling, you can text one another. Sometimes it's easier for people to be just using, you know, text exchange and use the words that you would describe uh, what you might want to do with each other if you were in the same room. Um, and there's ways to kind of just like maybe show certain things of yourself um, without revealing everything. The second tip I would say, and this kind of you know goes along with that, is to use your imagination. Um, this can take many forms whether that's enjoying, uh, you know, you can enjoy a shower together separately or a bath and a glass of wine. And many people are actually reporting during this pandemic that they're sharing fantasies with their partner for the very first time. So this goes with like even long-term relationship people as well as new daters. And the third tip I have is self-pleasure. This is what uh, health officials, uh, you know, from New York to Toronto have been, have been talking about. The safest <laughs> sex is with yourself. But this is a time you can explore your own pleasure. You can also do it with a partner. But while you are being physically safe, and this is the most important thing, make sure you are protecting your cyber safety. Okay, let's mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit more about safety tips. What what are some that you have for people who are going to be dating virtually? I mean, if anyone, first of all, is pressuring you to send photos, send videos, and you don't feel comfortable with that, that is a huge red flag, and you need to articulate that or swipe away. Um, and if you do want to get into this, I would suggest that you crop your face or any identifying features, um, uh, particularly at the beginning, although this may be good advice, depending on what you do for a living. You have to assume that anything you do record could end up out there in the world. So, you know, beware. Um, and there is a rise right now in people who are saying they are getting extorted. So again, you do want to be extremely careful and cautious with this kind of thing. Yeah, great, great tips. Okay, lastly, Valentine's Day is around the corner. So for couples who are new or been together for a really long time, what are some really uh, safe and easy, fun ways to celebrate Valentine's Day? You know what? A lot of people are talking about the fact whether they've been in long-term relationships or they are just dating is that these are not particularly sexy times. Um, I think so, though, you don't want to force that. So rather than worrying about buying like hot lingerie or like chocolate covered things um, or having the pressure to have a kind of sex, I encourage people, couples, um, no matter what stage of the dating landscape you're on to Talk about or think about redefining intimacy, what it means to feel like you're connected and feeling close, to be in love with someone. Ask questions you've never asked before. Revisit the foundations of what may be for a long-term relationship, what brought you together in the first place. Whether you've been together for 10 weeks or 10 years, it's important to dig deep sometimes, and this is the perfect time to do that. Cynthia, mm -hmm. thank you so much for these useful tips on how to navigate the world of pandemic dating safely. I feel like I'm going to use a bunch of them tonight, and we're going to be right back. We'll